Good morning and welcome to worship. It is wonderful to welcome each of you here to worship today, especially those of you who might be visiting with us. And I would encourage you to visit our website at www.bowmillsumc.org where you can learn more about our ministry and programming, get to know a little bit about us, and be in contact with us so that we might get to know you. I am so grateful for the many who give of themselves, of their time, their talent, and their financial gifts uh, to ensure the continuing ministry through Bow Mills United Methodist Church. If you would like to be a part uh, with your time and talent or by making a financial donation, I would encourage you to visit our website. You can give financially by scrolling down to the bottom and utilizing the donate button there, or you can mail uh, checks into our church office. Even though the building's closed, we do check our mail regularly. Uh, and be in touch with us about how you would like to be in service and in ministry. Uh, we are looking hopefully towards the future as we will be thinking about ministry kind of ramping up again uh, as the coronavirus wanes down. Prayers uh, with all of us uh, that we continue to do what is needed to do to protect ourselves uh, and others in our communities as we together uh, finish <laughs> this marathon uh, that we have been through. Today we will have the opportunity to share together in communion, and so I would encourage you uh, to have on hand uh, juice or water, as well as bread or some bread-like uh, substance, crackers or rice cake, uh, that we might share together in this meal, um, even in this different way that reminds us of our connection as the body of Christ. Also later in the service, we will be utilizing uh, the bowl of broken uh, sea glass pieces uh, and some water for our ritual action. And so I would encourage you to have those ready to go as well. Our Sunday morning adult study is also discussing uh, the topics raised each Sunday in worship. That group meets from 9.30 to 10.30 on Zoom each week. All are welcome to participate. Uh, contact the church office for the Zoom link and to join in. As Jerry Cantrell, who is the lead singer of the rock band Alice in Chains, has said, part of the healing process is sharing with other people who care. Indeed, this is a part of the church, part of the reason why Jesus gives us community. He doesn't send the disciples out one by one. He sends them, sends them out two by two. Knowing the need we have as human beings for belonging and connection, Jesus reminds us how important that connection is. He invites us to a community, a place where we can share what is important and difficult for us with others who care, and to create that same space for others to be heard and cared for. Our service today truly invites us to see the power in sharing our stories, in telling the truth of our lives even when it is hard, telling the stories of brokenness, yes, and of healing, telling the stories of faith, certainly, but also of doubt. And so we continue in our Lenten season of recovery. We focus today on mental health as essential to our spiritual lives. Each of us is created a holy vessel of God's embodied love, blessed and blessing others.
those who collect beach glass often become archaeologists, seeking out any markings or clues as to the story of the original piece. Often it takes much time to bring out the truth behind it. We acknowledge the power of truth-telling as a healing property. There are stories that have shaped our lives, leaving us without the ability to see who we truly are in the eyes of God, and leaving us without the ability to speak the depth of our stories of struggle. We focus on the importance of recovery of mental health, reclaiming our sense of who we are and being able to proclaim new redemptive stories of divine worth. Vessels holy and whole, broken, needing the one, open, body and soul, healer come. Together, we acknowledge our need to restore and repair our holy vessels, that the health of our minds depends deeply and affects deeply our physical and our spiritual health. Join with me in the spirit of prayer. Centering and calming divine breath of God, you gifted us with amazing minds, capable of so many things. You gave us the ability to think and feel, imbuing us with the discernment of thought and emotion. Yet we struggle under the strain of disappointment, of despair, delusion. And too often we hide this afraid of what others might think of our difficulties in managing or of moving forward, even in the face of devastating circumstances. Too often we perpetuate the stigma of having a less than perfect state of mind by shaming ourselves and others. Years of misunderstanding compounds our fear we label and belittle, all the while turning that hatred upon ourselves, for no one is immune to the troubles of the mind at some point. So many are suffering now, God, weary, distraught, grieving, at the end of their rope. Sometimes we cannot fathom the proportions of this loss, and sometimes we look away, even from the need in our own community. Help us, healer. Show us our capacity for compassion. Forgive our inattention. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care for one another. In this silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness.
I invite you now to imagine and search for a warmth at the core of your body. It may help you to keep your eyes closed. This warm orb of light is deep within you. Although sometimes it feels dulled, even cold. If it feels this way now, allow this. Don't judge yourself. Or perhaps you do feel this warmth and all feels right with the world. Rest then in this presence and warmth. Whether or not you feel the warmth of peace and assurance right now, this does not make you right or wrong or good or bad. It just makes you human. And you are not alone. Perhaps you can imagine the warmth coming from someone whose presence fills you with comfort. See it radiate from them to you as it surely does when you need it the most. Know this, you are accepted no matter what. Accepting the truth of our difficulties is part of the journey of recovery. Sharing our stories of difficulties can open the way for healing, for you, for me, for all. Take a deep breath in to let this truth fill you and breathe out with the relief of assurance. Next, I invite you to imagine this warmth that surrounds you extending to those who may be next to you uh, in your home, either physically or those who are close to you in heart. And imagine that warmth extending beyond your walls to your neighborhood, to your neighbors, to the wider community, to the church, those here locally and those across the world, and see this warmth spread like the rising sun. Let it expand to all the world. Let this be our peace. Amen. If you have not done so already, I invite you to open your eyes. May the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with us all.
Oh, Miss Jen. Yes, Pastor Verge. I think it might be children's time. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. Great to see you. It's good to be here. Hi. Hi. Jay. Hi. How was everybody today? Good. You? Well, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, grand here. Yeah. And you good. too? Yeah. Very good. Yeah, reasonably so. So what do you think we should talk about today? Oh, good question. I mean, I know we're looking for the good gifts that God has been sharing with us. And right. I'm already starting to fill up with some of the good gifts from God. Yep. Like last week's gift, we had people who care. Mm. Like moms and dads mm -hmm. and doctors and nurses. That was a good one. Yep. Yes. Well, I think that the kids mm. might have something to share with us today. Really? Yes. Kids know a lot about how to heal and stay healthy, don't you guys? Yes. <laughs> well, kids really know what's good for us. Hmm. Yes, candy. <laughs> it's got to be candy. Candy, 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 candy. Kids love candy. They Is do. it candy, Pastor Verge? Is it candy? Yes, yes. No. What? No. It's not candy. Oh. Although I do love a good chocolate. Oh. I know. What? It's stuffed animals. Mm. I mean, most of the kids I know have stuffies. And they snuggle with them at night. Yes. You yeah. know, and they can bring mm -hmm. healing touches to us in our lives. Yep. But nope, it's not, not stuffed animals. I mean, stuffies are great. Yeah. Everybody's got a good stuffy. Do you have a favorite stuffy, Jay? I do. Oh. I have a soft teddy bear. Uh-huh. Okay. But Pastor Verge. Yes. If it's not candy mm -hmm. or stuffed animals, mm -hmm. what do kids know about that would be a good gift mm. to make us feel closer to God? Well, you may not believe this. If it comes from you, okay. I'll believe it. <laughs> but the gift today is the gift of laughter. <laughs> yep, it's laughter. true. Nice. Laughter. <laughs> you know <laughs> what? Laughter. Hey, nice laughing, Jay. I'm trying. Yeah, well, <laughs> laughter is really good for you. It's good for your heart. Mm -hmm. It's good for your blood pressure. It reduces it. And here's another thing. When you laugh, you release this natural painkiller called endorphins. Huh. And you feel really good when they come out. It's a True. really stress reliever. Oh. You know, I, I read something about that last week. Yep. Uh, doctors have found that people who laugh more mm -hmm. uh, actually have a good sense of well-being. Yes, that's they right. They smile more mm -hmm. and they live longer. Yeah, all right. <laughs> That's right. But did you know this? The average adult, which some might say are you and me, <laughs> laugh only 17 times per day. But the average child laughs, guess how many? Lots. 300 times a day. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So during Lent, when we're trying to get closer to God and when we're looking for God's good gifts, that help heal us, kids can show us the way through laughter. Okay. Oh, so should we just start laughing? That um, seems kind of strange. Uh, or, or, or I could tell one of my jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, would you, Jay? Yeah, tell us a joke, Please. Jay. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. All right, here goes. All okay, right, I'm ready. we're ready. Uh, okay, yeah. What do you call pastors in Germany? Ooh. Mm. German shepherds! <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. That's a good one, Jay. That okay, is. very good. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. How about this one? How do groups of angels greet one another? How? Halo, halo, halo! <laughs> <Like that. laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys. How about this one? Okay, I'm ready for another. What sort of lights was on Noah's Ark? Noah's Ark. Oh. Lights. Animal light. Uh. Floodlights. <laughs> that was good. I'm laughing so hard. My belly hurts. <laughs> it feels like I've been doing sit-ups. Oh. Uh, I guess that's another benefit of laughter. <laughs> Exercising your tummy. Yeah, all right. How about one more joke, Passive Verge? Okay, I think so. That's a good idea. Here I like it jokes. goes. Okay, I'm ready. Here at Bow Mills mm -hmm. United Methodist Church, mm -hmm. yeah. we are not Dairy Queen. Oh. 
But we do have good Sundays. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> that was a good one, that Jay. That was good, Jay. You know, laughter Yummy really one. is a good gift from God. Mm. And it helps fill me up with some empty space that I have inside me. Yeah, that's really true. It's These have been so great. I think I might write down these jokes and put them in my bucket Lather so that off. I can share them with my friends and family yeah. because we can be good disciples of Jesus by sharing God's gifts with others. We can help fill the empty spaces in others by sharing the gift of laughter, reminding them of God's love and people who care for us like we learned about last week and through, ha ha ha, this gift of laughter. Yeah. You know, thank you both for helping me this week. Now, what do you think about including laughter in our repeat after me prayer today? <laughs> yeah, laughter. Let's, Let's include laughter in our repeat after me prayer. prayer. <laughs> thank you, God. Thank, thank you, God. God. For each new day. For, for each new day. day. We'll look for you. We'll look for you as we work and play. As we work and play. Fill us up. Fill us up. With the gifts you give. With, with the, the gifts you give. That always show. That always show. Your way to live. Your way to live. Today we thank you. Today we thank you. For the gift of laughter. For the, for the gift of laughter. Show us ways. Show, Show us ways to lighten our days. To lighten our days. And laugh more. And, and laugh more. more. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank, Thank you, God. God. Amen. 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 All, right. All right. Thanks so much, uh, you guys. I feel boy. so much better. I, I can't wait for next week right? to see what good gifts God is bringing to fill us up. Yes. Yeah, my tummy still hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I Hopefully need a nap your tummy now. Feels better That's by next right. week. See you next week, everybody. Oh, yeah. High five. Oh, high high five. Woo! Hey, Miss high Jen. Five. High five. High five, everybody. Mm. There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. Tell the story of the mountain you climbed. Your words could become a page in someone else's survival guide. Owning our story and loving ourselves through that process is the bravest thing that we will ever do. Your heartache is someone else's hope. If you make it through, Somebody else is going to make it through. Tell your story.
Our scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 through 33. Our scripture reading for today continues in the healing narratives of Jesus in Matthew's gospel. Each individual story of healing represents the bigger truth that God in Jesus has come to heal us all to bring us all out of the shadows and into God's marvelous light. Notice in this story that the two men followed Jesus before they were healed, and thus, unlike the disciples, had prophetic vision. May we hear the truth of this story for our lives today. As Jesus went on from there, Two blind men followed him, crying loudly, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you and their eyes were opened. Then Jesus sternly ordered them, See that no one knows of this. But they went away and spread the news about him throughout that district. After they had gone away, a demoniac who was mute was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, The one who had been mute spoke, and the crowds were amazed and said, Never has anything like this been seen in Israel. I invite you to join with me now in the spirit of prayer. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts and minds, Be acceptable in your sight, O God, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Viola was a young adult who found herself one day on the edge of despair. Well, not even really on the edge anymore, but deep, deep within a daily desperate despair. She had fallen into this shadowed cave and like a tunnel with a light far, far away, she felt like there was going to be no way out. Outwardly, her life seemed normal and to those who didn't look closely, successful even. She had a meaningful job. She could and did pay all her bills. Her home was reasonably neat. She was fed reasonably well. She had friends and family with whom she connected regularly, uh, went and did fun things with, but there was something missing. Like that storm cloud that just seemed to follow her around, muddying her vision and her perception strangling her joy of life. Slowly, slowly it continued to progress until it came to the point when it was difficult to get out of bed, difficult to force herself to go to work. She found herself withdrawing from friends and family, just wanting to be alone. And then when she was alone, finding that most of her time was spent sleeping or crying. She was in a deep depression, but she reached out for help finally and found a therapist and was able to name this experience not just as a weakness of mind or spirit, but rather an illness with a name, symptoms, causes, and a path to healing. 
With the help of this counselor, she began to find clues and tools to bring out the truth underneath the depression. Simply naming the truth of her illness, the truth of how she actually felt to herself, and allowing herself to admit where she really was, instead of pretending that it wasn't really that bad. And then beginning to admit even to her closest friends and family and being able to stop pretending that she was fine when she wasn't. These small steps began her on a healing process that uncovered the stories that shaped her life. Those who created her into the person that she was and would continue to be but also those stories, those habits, those um, thoughts about herself, about the world that no longer served her, that maybe had for a time as some kind of coping mechanism, but were no longer allowing her to live life fully. Does this story sound at all familiar to you? It does to me, because actually that's my story. That in the years, early years of my ministry, I really wrestled with deep depression. And it's important for us in the church to remind ourselves and one another that people who wrestle with mental illness, of which there are many kinds, are not somehow less than. It's not about just putting on a stiff upper lip because sometimes those ways of coping make it worse. Sometimes those can be helpful tools but often they prevent us from truly telling the stories that need to be told. Jesus was all about telling stories in scripture, telling stories to people so that they would understand in different sorts of ways what he was about, that they would understand who God is and was and will continue to be, from the experiences of their own lives, the experiences of other lives, the ways of the world. And Jesus invited them to see how things could be and are different in the kingdom, not just far away, but right in the here and now. Sometimes when we talk about healing, it can be very hard because there's a sense in which we pray for healing, all of us do, for others, if not for ourselves, but many of us for ourselves too. And that's good. But healing doesn't always come in the ways that we expect. And when Jesus talks about healing, when Jesus heals people, it's less about the healing itself and more about the ways in which that reincorporates people into the community in ways where there has been division. That healing isn't about those who pray hard enough get it. <laughs> Although there's an element of faith that is mysterious to us. And we all know of situations where we've prayed for a miracle and a miracle's happened. And we know of those circumstances where we've prayed for a miracle and it doesn't happen. But it isn't like in one situation we had faith and in another we didn't. Or someone had better faith than someone else. We don't understand the depths of the mysteries of human life, of the way that God is at work. But we believe in a God of goodness, a God uh, who creates humankind in God's own image. Not that God would find us lacking, but that God would find us beloved. 
even in our mistakes and struggles. But I think part of the reason why God gets angry or we hear of the anger of God throughout Scripture is because we're choosing the hard way. I remember a teacher once said to me, um, you can learn things the easy way or you can learn things the hard way and most of us choose the hard way. And isn't it true? When somebody says, hey, you shouldn't do that because blah, 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 sometimes we take their advice depending on who it is. But if it's our parent, or if we're giving advice to our kid, or when our kid is giving advice to us, we might not be so ready to take someone else's direction. Sometimes that transfers over to our relationship to God. In my Lenten journey, I've been thinking a lot about trust in God and allowing God to work in me and through me and turning my will over to God. And I realize how hard that is, that there's a part within me that just doesn't want to release my own will. Fear maybe, misunderstanding, Maybe it's that healing that I need, digging through the histories of myself and the world and the ways that we've become separated from God. I've forgotten who I am, the beloved of God, and that is enough. You are the beloved of God, and that is enough. What is your story? What are the places in your life where you have um, resisted God's love? The places in your life when you have been drawn towards God's love? When I was in the midst of a deep and dark depression, it wasn't until I stopped running from it and finally simply admitted that's where I was and decided to kind of look around at why. And that's where I noticed, became aware of, and encountered the divine presence within me, within my story. In the midst of my brokenness, God was there, providing clarity, inviting a new way of seeing, helping me to discard the stories that, weren't really true about who I was and how I was. Yes, these things had happened to me. Yes, I had done these things, but I wasn't only that. Each of us is so much more than we can possibly imagine. And God invites us to tell our stories that in the truth telling, We invite others to help us see. Now, sometimes that's very hard. Because what we've been invited to see is not something we'd like to see. Like when our actions or our lives or the things that we think are just the way it is become uncovered and shown that they're not helpful or that they might be destructive. And God invites us to hear and to see in this new way. In our scripture today, we have a story of Jesus healing. These two men who are defined as blind are actually following Jesus before they're healed. That they name Jesus with Lord. They proclaim his title, and in fact, they call him Son of David, which is a little bit of a politically risky title at the time, because it would call attention to Jesus from the empire, from Rome. It would cause waves in the structure of the authority of the day. And so it's important for us to see how In the midst of their physical blindness, 
they could see in ways that the disciples didn't. And what's so interesting is that uh, one of the uh, commentators said is that they might have even been better disciples before they were healed because the first thing they do after Jesus heals them, you know, they're grateful and Jesus says, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody what's going on here. And they head right out and disobey Jesus, direct order. And the word spreads about Jesus. Now, part of that is the greater narrative in the Gospel of Matthew, that more and more people are beginning to see and hear. But whether they actually see who Jesus really is, hear and listen to receive the truth of what Jesus is saying and doing, that is a mystery that continues to develop throughout the scripture. It's important for us to remember that in Jesus' day, <clears throat> when people had various kinds of illnesses, it was seen as a, a mark against their character, that somehow there was something wrong with them in a, in a moral or spiritual or good ethical sense. That blindness or uh, not being able to speak or not being able to hear or the skin diseases, all of those things were seen as um, an outward marker of somehow that person's sinfulness or the ways in which uh, some member of their family, that they were taking on the sins of the family like a scapegoat. But that's not what scripture teaches. Even though that belief persists, doesn't it? When bad things happen to us, we don't say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> we say, why me? What did I do? That's a natural human response. No one wants to suffer. But in today's world, we are learning that people who have disabilities are not less than they're differently abled. That their experience of humanity is the same, yet different. In other words, we're all humans, and just as hair color is different from person to person, so too uh, disability changes the way we interact, maybe, in the world. That it's all part of the whole human experience. That being healed is not about being made perfect or having anything that we think of as wrong with us fixed. Healing is about reconciliation, reconciliation with God. Healing is about drawing us closer and closer and closer to the power and presence of God. Healing us inwardly that we might heal outwardly that the healing would flow through us to the world. One of the altar pieces is this beautiful plate, which you can see has been broken. And it's a Japanese art form to put things back together uh, and to use this kind of a gold inlay to bring them back together to remind us Brokenness doesn't go away. It remains a part of who we are. Perhaps sometimes it does. But that in the healing, God brings about new life, new hope in ways that we could not imagine. Now I want to tell you that I don't want to go back and live through that deep depression. No, nobody wants to live in depression. But it shaped me into who I am today. And there are parts of me that came about because of that time, because of that healing, that I don't want to let go of. The kind of compassion that developed within me. The um, learning and continuing learning 
ability to sort of be with what is, to be present even to the pain of life. Because when we, as Brene Brown says, numb ourselves to the pains of life, when we try to avoid all that is painful, we also numb ourselves to the joy of life. That a human being is about a whole range of emotion, experience, presence. It's a human having a spiritual experience. And so I would encourage you to think about your story. What is your story? How is God at work in you? Telling you or telling your story with you. Amen. Will you join with me in a spirit of prayer? Healer of our every ill, especially the infection of stigmatized fear of mental illness, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. You have stamped each one of us as worthy. We give you thanks that your mercy is wide and your faithfulness to us does not depend upon having our feelings sorted out or our sense of well-being secure. You are not waiting for us to get our act together before offering us your love and grace. We pray especially for those who have experienced heightened and acute mental and emotional difficulties as a result of this past year of isolation and fear, and for all anywhere who suffer this day. We pray for those who feel far from hope, and we mourn those who could not find a lifeline to survive this hardship. We pray for those who find themselves without access to adequate care or someone to talk to or appropriate resources to steady their hearts and minds. We give thanks for those who are telling their stories, showing us how to open our hearts to help others and offering ripples of healing in the community. We pray grateful thanks for progress toward holistic health care and the efforts of all who are working to destigmatize mental, mental illness, making it easier to ask for and get the help so desperately needed. We ask for courage and encouragement to reevaluate how we as a church can help now and into the future. We speak now in the silence of our hearts, or aloud, prayers for the people, places, or situations of need. These prayers and petitions we raise before you now. Healer of our every ill, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, your creation. We pray for our nation and leaders and for all who suffer. We pray for our friends, families, and even those we might name as enemies. Healer of our every ill, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we lift these prayers and all our prayers in the name of Jesus, the divine physician who came to heal 
and taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In your love, make us whole. May we rest in your compassion, calm the lost, weary soul, in the warmth of your love. May your peace fill our hearts, may we know the love of Jesus by your grace. And soul make us holy make us whole I invite you now to make ready your bread or cracker, rice cake, and your juice and water to join in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And come join with me now to receive this gift, this encouragement from the one who makes beauty from brokenness, as we join together in the great prayer of thanksgiving. Our God is with you. Our God is with us all. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to our God. Let us give thanks to our sovereign God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, healing God. In the beginning, you breathe life into raw materials, creating and animating containers of beauty and goodness. We, your holy vessels, were fired in your kiln of love until we shined with your light. Susceptible to shattering, we find ourselves broken, unable at times to remember your promise, God, of repair. Yet you remind us time and again that though broken, we are held in your presence and made whole by your grace. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join your unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy God, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, the holy vessel of divine presence on earth. Your spirit anointed in him, a container of grace in the form of preaching good news to the poor, proclaiming release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, setting at liberty those who are oppressed, and announcing that the time had come when you would save your people. Jesus healed the sick fed the hungry, and ate with those considered too broken for company. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, to the path of healing and recovery. 
and gave to us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And when Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit, we are never alone. And so as we gather this time, we remember on a night so long ago, Jesus gathered with his friends, the disciples, those he had healed. He took bread, gave thanks to you, God, and he broke the bread. And then he gave it to the disciples and he said, take eat. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, O God, and blessed the cup. And then he gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of the healing, life-transforming acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so pour out your Holy Spirit on us who gather, on all who gather, and on these gifts of bread and cup that are here, that are here, dispersed to your table, O God, all throughout the land. Make them be for us your healing spirit through Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, healing agents in a broken world, offering the lifeblood of hope. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, healing God, now and forever. Amen. And I invite you to take a piece of bread. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. Eat and remember his gifts. And taking your cup, this is the cup of healing love that is poured out for us all. Drink now and remember Christ's healing love for you and for all. Thank you, God, for this holy mystery in which you give yourself to us. Fed at this table, nourished by your presence, healed by your Son, send us forth to the world, blessed to be a blessing. Amen. The courage it takes to share your story might be the very thing someone else needs to open their heart to hope. Encouraging words about the power of sharing our stories. 
The words of Jesus that we heard in this week's healing story. Do you believe I am able to do this? Jesus' question invites us to consider our own belief in transformation. Do you believe I can do this? Jesus invites us to step into that renewed vision of our own lives, to speak into being this new story, not bound by the stories of the past, uh, those that have been inscribed upon us by others that may oppress us or limit us, but rather to step into this new story. As God's chosen, God's beloved, God's healing agents in the world. So last week, we put our pieces of beach glass in a bowl. And one thing that I've noticed is that beach glass can be a little cloudy when it's dry. I don't know if you've noticed that. Some pieces are clear, but others are cloudy and hard to see through. And yet, when it comes into contact with water, it becomes clear and bright. And so I encourage you to take some water and to fill your bowl with a little water over your pieces of glass and see how that living water transforms the cloudiness to clarity. And as you do this, I encourage you to let this be your prayer for clarity in your own life. Ask for a new way to experience this time, to see the struggles you're facing. Ask for understanding and for God to lead you, to trust God to lead you. And so I invite you um, to think of this just a moment. And then when you're ready, you pick up your container and breathe in deeply. Looking at these now clear and bright pieces of glass in the water. Invite the spirit to live and move in you, transforming you and others with clarity for our lives. And so I invite you to place this in a, in a place where you'll see it regularly this week. And uh, the suggestion is maybe near where you're going to be cleaning up, getting ready, uh, providing a space for clarity. Oh,
This week, our healing story, Jesus heals uh, two men, restores their sight, heals another and who is now able to speak, and the crowd is amazed. They have never seen anything like it before, it says, the scripture says. How interesting that they are seeing something in a new light, an invitation for us too, like the crowd, to be seeing in a new way. How do we need to figuratively open our eyes to envision in new ways? As we consider communal healing, I want to encourage you to think with me about how we can continue to shine a positive light on mental health, on the needs of so many, an ever-growing number of people who are in need of mental health care because of the pandemic, because of the stresses of living in this time, because of so many different reasons. But let's together help to remove the stigma, allow people to be honest about where they are, and work towards getting the help and healing that they need. To find ways to live abundantly in the midst of of trying and difficult times, to find a way to care for the chronic illnesses in a way that brings joy and presence. Let us together continue to reflect and explore on how God is calling us in this time to be agents of healing love. Now I invite you to go with confidence that the one who is living water brings clarity, cleansing, renewing, and clarifying our lives, recovering the depth of our love for all, our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears. Do you believe it's possible? And may the Spirit hover move and fill you. Salve to your soul and bring you healing for the world. Amen. Yeah.